Hello everyone, thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome to this webinar, live demo, and to end up development on web ratio. I am Paolo Riviello, and I will be your host. The session is organized as follows. We have 50 minutes for the demo, and 10 minutes for the Q&A. If you have any questions or technical issues during the session, please, please write, write them in the chat box at the bottom right of your screen. Your question will be taken up in the question and answer session at the end of the webinar. We will also record this session and email you the link. Let me introduce you now the speakers of the today's session. Daniel Parde is software architect for digital and mobile technologies at Cognizant. Michela Frigerio is learning and support manager at WebRatio. Thank you once again, and now over to Daniel. Please, Daniel. Thank you, Paolo. That was uh, uh, good. Uh, we will um, uh, get started here. Uh, let me open the web ratio. So as you can see, uh, folks, this is the web ratio uh, interface. Uh, I have also set up uh, MySQL Workbench. And uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, and uh, myself, Daniel Parde, and Michaela from WebRatio, we will uh, try to uh, explain to you in a very short time how uh, uh, actual uh, development happens using the WebRatio platform. So what we uh, see here is basically uh, the UI uh, of web ratio on the right hand side you see a project is already open which I was working on so let me close that and uh, I want to show you how you will see it when you start the web ratio. This is how basically the web ratio platform looks like when you open the screen. On the right hand side here is your editor where you will edit your uh, IFML and UML uh, models and on the left hand side is your selections where you can see what the different projects are. Uh, you can see we are primarily going to work on the mobile service, mobile project and the data service project but there are other default projects types uh, that WebRatio allows you, for example, mobile style projects to configure your uh, brand specific uh, uh, digital assets and so on and so forth and you can add components here. But we are only going to create one mobile project for the client side uh, application and a data service project for the uh, back end uh, services. And here we have the outline, uh, then the packages and then the package explorer and the cloud but uh, primarily we are going to stick here and uh, stay here and uh, we start I want you to uh, pay attention to the, the couple of things that I'm going to now show you because uh, uh, those parts of the projects are very important and critical so let us first create a mobile project you go to file create a project I will create any project say for example demo and uh, or say travel demo. I will not select any pattern for now because I want to show you later what patterns are. And so here is how a new project created uh, looks. You come into the outline tab and on the right hand side you have the screen editor and uh, this uh, left side bottom window, the properties, is something which you will have to always keep an eye on because any selection you make in your editor you have the properties and the entire uh, model driven approach is basically um, drawing your models and setting the properties so you will spend most of your time either on here in the app view where you will be actually drawing your IFML navigation flows and actions and layouts and in the domain model where you will use your UML to define your classes but as you can see here no matter where you are the corresponding properties will automatically show up and you will be basically working with properties. So without any further delay, let me uh, go ahead and uh, start our traditional uh, Hello World application. As you heard in the uh, first webinar, Professor Marco explained us the very found fundamentals of IFML. Uh, we have some view containers and uh, inside that we put some view uh, components and some actions and events. and. Uh, everything as you can see in this toolbar here, you have the actions, you have the navigation flows, you have some events, you have some components and you have some utility components. So let us first create one basic view and we'll call this view say for example event and uh, uh, let us uh, add a component to it, a view component uh, which uh, basically just says uh, we need a message hello world 
So we'll just simply say oh, welcome message. And as you can see here, the property changes and it allows us to edit the text where we are going to simply say hello world. And uh, just to show the flavor of how you create the app, here is the generate and run button. Uh, so these uh, three points you will always want to keep in mind. You edit here, set the properties here, and you generate the code here. And as soon as you press the generate code button, it comes up, this is how quick it does. It's within a fraction of a second. It asks you to open the emulator, and lo and behold, you have your app here with the hello world. Now this is a real app. It actually created the complete code for you and it's not a prototype it's a fully functional app and uh, we have here uh, since we are here in the simulator on chrome i would also like you to point out to certain things that we will be using the device actions for example back to move to the previous screen suspend to simulate an action where uh, you get interrupted with a phone call your app goes in the background and of course offline if you're not connected to the uh, internet. So we are going to have two parts to this webinar. One is the offline and one is the uh, online where you will actually connect to the service. So currently I'm going to go offline because we are going to work with local data. And here in, uh, you can select devices, choose the device of your choice, choose the orientations, and that's how you actually work on this for those who have not used this before. So we are not going to change anything here. We are just going to use these device actions and uh, that's it. And so what I want to now go back and uh, uh, show you a very basic offline or local database application. So now we have a welcome screen, the hello world is done. Uh, why don't we add another, say for example, a list view and uh, try to show something more concrete and let us call it as some events. But as you can see, the view is there and it shows a question mark that, hey, you are asking me to show something, but I need to bind to some class for this. So where is the data going to come from? And so for that, uh, I will have to go to the domain model and create some basic uh, class. Let us call it, say, for example, events. And uh, this is how you create a class. Pay attention to this because uh, I won't be creating any other classes for the backend service. I already have a pre-created class. But uh, just so that you know how a class is created, you might want to just take a look at it. It's very simple, mundane stuff that you do all the time. Just go to the properties. You edit the class. Right click, edit class. And you come here. And uh, let's add some fields to it, say, for example, date which has a date property. Here are the different options that you have. Blob is obviously the binary data, the PDF files, images and stuff. Boolean is some Boolean, yes, no, true, false. Then you have date and so on and so forth. So primarily we are going to just uh, use it. You can take a look at this later. Uh, this is, uh, you can download the free version of web ratio from the website and take a look at what are these different options and uh, what basically they are intended to do. And then we have location. Let us take some more fields here. Say, for example, note. Note, I would like to be a little longer, so I'll use the text. And uh, let us take maybe a subject, uh, which is just a string. So this is how basically you create a, a class. And uh, now I have my events class ready. I go back to my app view. And now I tell that this view a component here, I want to bind to the events class. And once this binding is done, the question marks are gone. And I can also set, uh, maybe I don't want to show everything in here. I just want to show a couple of fields. So maybe the date and uh, say, for example, I may want to show the subject. These are the only two fields I want to show. And uh, I don't want to show the rest of the stuff. And so it's fine. So we just select those two things. And in the sort attributes, uh, I want to sort this by the descending order of the date. And that's it. I've configured uh, my entire view. And let's go and see what uh, web ratio will generate for this kind of a very basic uh, view. We'll go to the Chrome and we'll refresh our screen. And there we go. We got our events table here. Now you might wonder where this all this data has come from. Uh, web ratio uh, create.
called dummy data for you to keep moving fast and building your apps. And uh, of course, uh, this JSON file is available to you. You can bring it into a project from your folder and put some relevant data which makes sense to you and work on that data. But just for you to keep going and not to waste time creating dummy data, WebBrace has already created the basic data for you. So here uh, we see the list view and uh, maybe uh, you might want to just add a quick uh, details view here uh, to, for example, let me take another view container and uh, just, I'll do this real quick just so that you have a flavor of what web ratio is all about. I will create a details view and uh, add a detail here and let's call it event details. And again, I will give the same class. I will bind it to this class. Then I will create a navigation flow. So for example, you want to select, this is how you add a navigation flow. There's another way to do it. You can pick it from here as well. But what you basically did here is you wanted to have the user connect from this view to this view. And uh, that should happen based on an event, which is basically a tap event. And uh, it has already selected the connecting key as OID. And now if you generate the source code, you will see actually uh, not only the details view here, but you will also see some arrow which will take you to the next section and you can come back. So basically, uh, you have this key condition set here. And you come to the details view. Okay, so what I want to now show is you have these two views here, fine. Uh, we can uh, build upon on top of this and uh, have a fundamental thing. But I also want to show you uh, the offline, the service model. And for that, I am going to create an application menu because you can't have an application without having some way of navigating. So what I intend to do here is to create two bars in your screen. Here, I want to have two bars at the bottom. One is for events, one is for travel. And the events part is all offline local data, but the travel I want to connect to a data service project. And so to do that, I'm going to create one uh, uh, toolbar option here. I'm going to call it the application menu. And this application menu, I want to connect for two different things, but so that uh, we don't want to confuse or make the diagram complicated, there's another concept web ratio has, which is called a screen set. Uh, to keep it look elegant, I'm going to uh, surround this with a screen set. A screen set is nothing but a group of views and navigation flows, and uh, it just uh, kind of makes your uh, model looks plain and simple so that you don't have all these views jumbled up. And I'll create another uh, view here for the travel. And uh, in this travel view, I will create another screen set uh, just so that um, I will be having a number of uh, views added to that uh, as well. And that set of views I will call as travels. So what we have here is uh, one screen set with a bunch of views and the navigation flows called event, another screen set with the navigation flows uh, called travel, and then there's a toolbar that connects these two. So how do we connect this toolbar? So we need to go to the layout section, and uh, we have a back button. We have here a top bar and a bottom bar. What I want to do is in the top bar, I want to have a back button so I can uh, go back to the previous screen. And then I also would like to have a screen title. And I will put that as well. And so we have these two views here. And uh, to make it uh, look like a proper uh, bar, I'm going to also select the mobile default bar. Because if it is left to as just default, it's not going to look very pretty. And so I'm going to make it look uh, as though it is a real uh, mobile bar. And, and I will also configure the bottom bar the same way. In the bottom bar, uh, I want to basically put my events, but I have not yet defined any events. So let me go here and connect this 
with a navigation flow to our event screen and we'll call this event and same way I will connect this here with the navigation floor to the travel and we'll call it travels so once I do that I save it I come back to the layout now I see these two events and I want these events to be in my bottom bar where I can actually uh, create the tabs so I come here I take my events on the left come here I take my events to the right and uh, again as I said it's nice to give it a proper layout uh, so we are going to make it look like a tab. So I'll select the default as tab. And since it is going to have a user interaction, I want to also change the event layout to tab. So you have you know, basically uh, created here a layout with the top bar, the bottom bar, and we have an empty grid in the middle, which we are going to populate with some uh, class model uh, called travel expenses. And uh, that is going to be the uh, use our backend project. But to just see how this view has been generated, what kind of source code will be generated. Let us take a look at this one. So we go back and we refresh our screen here. And as you can see, we got the events here, the travels. It's currently empty because we don't have any class tied to it. But in a very uh, short time, and we got a back button. And of course, we can change this back button to what we want. Uh, we can uh, use a chevron left or something like that. Uh, all the ionic framework icons, you can set the properties and uh, you know make it look the way you want it. But fu fundamentally, we are already progressing very fast and seeing how uh, with the few clicks and few setting of properties, we have built a, a, a good deal of uh, functionality here and this is all running code so now uh, that we have our applications done and uh, this is uh, all uh, set to go what I really want to do is I want to take you to the other project the data services project and explain you a little bit this is the uh, meat of the back end all your data services uh, are configured here and I currently have uh, created the project for you before we started the demo uh, because of lack of time we may not have time to create the entire thing uh, now because it requires you to have a SQL server uh, which I've already opened up here in my SQL uh, my SQL bench this is our SQL server and uh, this is our default schema that I'm going to use and uh, so that you know these tables are all generated by web ratio in the model and if you see the domain model here I created this class these are the default classes that web ratio gives, gives us for device and the user and role but the expense travel class I created and you know how to create a class you just go and edit here the way you did it before and uh, your class properties are set and basically you save it and once you save it all I did was I did a right click here and said synchronize and synchronizing this model actually creates our data tables in the back end it's very very powerful and so you have all your data and it don't be deceived by the simplicity of it oh yeah we know it will just create what we give it but it also has the other way process so if you have tables in existence it can create your domain models based on the tables and if you have some tables but only some columns are modified it allows you that granularity to go and modify from this model I'm going to add a property here go and add it to my table or my class model domain model doesn't have this property I want you to bring it from the table to this class and so all with all these functionalities are there these associations are built for you one to many many to one uh, many to many and so on and so forth so this is in general how the, the data service project was built we created a class we synchronized the table we got the table we have a table connection here and we have some services uh, where the data service basically we see this travel expense how we created the service was just very plain and simple we just come here right click configure service and in the expense travel what services do you want I want to read or create update delete and then it generated the services for me also there is something called as user services in user services uh, you have a configure service option this comes to you by default you really did not build it and uh, this is all preset uh, uh, ready-made template for you 
uh, you got a login, but suppose you want the first time users to register, uh, which is basically it will create a web ser a service, REST based web service for you, where you can provide the credentials and it will go and add that uh, user into your backend table. So I might want to create a register service. An update is just another uh, way of modifying your existing users. And login is uh, the to log in the existing users. So I create this service as well. Now we have two services here, login, register, and I also have the expense travel service. So I want to now build my services uh, and uh, see how uh, we are going to actually uh, consume them in our client app. So I click, so generate service uh, uh, button generate source code button, it's showing here to the bottom right, starting Tomcat, and it's going to now create all these uh, web services and uh, uh, show you uh, in, a, in a minute how you can actually understand that service project. Here we are. So look at this. Uh, what you see here is, is a full-blown uh, REST-based service, uh, get, post, put, delete, and you you have not written a single line of code up to this moment. Think of this for a minute, how, how this is created. This is the power of IFML and the implementation on web ratio. You have here a full uh, functional REST-based web service, production grade, thread safe, ready to be deployed. It is currently deployed uh, locally, but you can deploy wherever you want later on, and you can actually check this with a Postman or SOAP UI and uh, put some dummy data, and uh, you will create a registered user. You can uh, get, but since we are already going to do this in our client side, uh, from the application, we are going to actually call this expense service and populate the data. As you can see here, in my backend, I've already populated data in the expense travel. This data is going to be used by that web service and we are going to populate it into our client app. So let's uh, spend some one more minute uh, here. So we have the endpoints here. You have your headers. It also gives you a response uh, format how you want it. So when, when I would want to test it, I will just cut paste uh, this um, code from here, uh, JSON object, and, and this web service always creates JSON, ob JSON object. So whenever you are doing a mobile data service project, you are going to get a JSON object ready-made for you. And now uh, we see here the register service. We can see the login service. This file upload download is also created for you. Uh, as you can see, um, this uh, probably can be used for some of your uh, uh, blob uh, objects which has some binary data which automatically needs to be synced to your backend database and so on and so forth. And here we have our expense travel service. So, so far so good. We created the web service with the click of a button and uh, the model as I said was just creating a class and synchronizing the backend and now we have the fully functional data. So, let's go back to our uh, uh, travel demo project here. And now what I want to do is I want to be able to give a, a login uh, to my users in this model. I want to somewhere put a login functionality because you don't want your users to come and access your app uh, and start pressing your tabs to go to travels or events before they actually log in. And so I want to secure this area what I will probably do is make uh, this into a secure area and just surround it with a screencast set and call it private area for that matter. Area and uh, I want this protected and so to protect it, uh, they have to log in. Now to do a login, I can actually create IFML uh, modeling. I can create a view container and you know add a form and create a login screen and tie my service to that. But uh, there is a shortcut uh, which Web Ratio provides here as well. Uh, they created a pattern. If you see here, include pattern from library. Uh, there's a login and home pattern, and since this is required by practically every app they have uh, given you a pre-built IFML and uh, action uh, form, everything for you. And of course, you can customize it uh, as you want it, but it saves you some time. You'll agree with that. So what we are looking at here is basically 
uh, a log in view, which is this uh, view container. We got a form from here. This is the form, and they populated the form with the basic uh, uh, elements, uh, login, uh, user ID, password, and so on. And then they define the action. And uh, we also have the uh, success flow going to your home uh, screen. But this is not our home screen. This is what they provided. And we really don't want this. So we, I'm going to just delete this. This came free from the pattern, so we really didn't work for it. We can delete it. And we are going to take this into uh, our uh, our home screen which is basically this one here and uh, this screen now I want to define it as my home screen and uh, this will make all the difference for us and uh, as we said we want to it is already protected the whole screencast is pro set is protected but I can make it protected as well it doesn't make a difference and it gives you the option who, who should be able to access it and you can define the roles right now it is basically any authenticated user who is a valid user should be able to use it and um, that's all there is to it so we basically can now go and see what we got here so if you can be able to log in Generation done in one second. We go back here, and uh, here is our app. I refresh it, and we come to the login. And I have created a admin user here, just so that we will be able to log in. Fair enough. We are into the screen. We can see our event. We can see our travels. And now I want to basically consume the travel service uh, to populate our travel screen. So going back, we come here, and now let us concentrate. So uh, think of it. We really did a lot of functionality in a very short time here. We created our data tables. We created our uh, uh, login. We created this. And now what I want to really do is we just like, want to keep moving without any uh, wasting of time. I am going to quickly put some class here. And since we don't have a class, here is something cool I want to show you that uh, in web ratio, just like we created a class and populated the tables there by synchronizing, and I said you can also synchronize it the downwards, you come here and click, right click, and now you say synchronize domain model. So I don't really have to create a class on my object side. I'm going to get the class ready made from my model. And so when I do that, it asks me, okay, which uh, uh, model do you want to synchronize with? Well, I have my travel data services running, and uh, that's where I want you to go. And uh, if you can please uh, get me a class, uh, say, for this or this, and I can basically take this. Okay. Or you can just come here and select all and uh, be done. Okay, couldn't find the domain model synchronizer. One second. Oh, <laughs> this is funny because it didn't find space, it, it was not within my view. I was surprised for a bit, why did the class not synchronize? But here is our client side class model. So what we have here now, we have a data service project, which has a domain model, which is mapped to our table in the back end here in the MySQL bench. This is our user expense table. Here are the columns in that table. And if you look at here, this is our table in the back end. Uh, this is our uh, data service here, which is travel service. And now what we just did was we synchronized our uh, client side model with the same uh, data service and data table and now we are going to get our data into this so coming back to our mobile project now I want to go to the app view 
and basically we are almost there we just bring a list view into this and uh, add uh, the travel or expenses or whatever I can just say and bind the class basically we just created a class and uh, we know what class we created this is the class that we just created we want to bind it and we want to display the properties uh, uh, attributes uh, what we want to show in the list I will basically simply want to show the date and I will want it to be above the amount and then I want to show the amount and maybe the name so these three items I'm going to show in my list and uh, then I will create a detail to show uh, the rest of the stuff and I showed my attributes and I will also want to sort it uh, basically it's always good to sort stuff descending on the date so you see the latest expense before everything else and now I am ready to generate my code and I will just I usually like to save it it does it automatically but as a habit I just want to save stuff before and I'm going to just go and generate my code and uh, let us come back here and uh, I'm sure this is not going to work because uh, as you know that our class uh, let's see it anyway I want to show you why it will not work see it will not work because we never really told our, our client side app where to connect to right we we know uh, the where the web services are currently running but our app still doesn't know that and so you probably want to make the app know where our uh, endpoint is and so I'm just going to take uh, uh, this here and uh, Cut and paste it. Base URL HTTP localhost travel service. And it also allows you to, you know, if you want to check the credentials on resume, so for when you're running the app and, and uh, it goes into background, comes back, do you want them to? I mean, depending on the sensitivity of your data, you may or may not want to set that property. But right now, at least this we need to do, and then uh, we can actually. Uh, generate our project uh, okay so our web service is now connected we have given the uh, endpoint so generation is done in one minute we go to the app dashboard synchronizing and now we come here this is the details uh, I will look at that uh, okay so you see here uh, the date, the name, and the amount are coming from our backend. They just consumed the service. Uh, this is very powerful. Look at this here. This is our name, John Smith. This is our amount and uh, the date, basically. This is our date. So from the table to the service, to the client side app all this is happening from this small little visual model that we created here think of it you have a login screen you did the complete login credentials you came into this you got your toolbar and you select one of the two tabs and if this tab is selected we have uh, the local data let me fix this here you know we, we see that there is nothing here because we never really selected any attributes for this so I'm just going to select all and check this out because when we go to the events uh, from master to detail we see an empty screen there and that's not good we want some details because we never gave any attributes anyway on the travel side we are not having local data we are having uh, back-end data and we are consuming rest based services to pull that data that's this is very powerful and all we have done this is your whole code folks this is the entire code that you wrote from the visual model everything else is generated the entire angular js uh, java spring hibernate everything is taken care of by uh, web ratio platform 
but this is code. Now think of portability. When I really want to send this code to someone, I don't actually send the several hundred megabytes of jar files and anything else. I basically just send this WR file, which you see here. This is my code, this model.wr, and it's, it's less than 6 MB, actually. <laughs> if that's your uh, limit on uh, your email attachments, you can send this code as long as they have web ratio platform and they just go and generate the code. And to make this more uh, nice and elegant, I'm just going to add one more since we have some time. Let me quickly add a detail view here as well uh, to just, uh, you know, play with it a little bit and uh, get the concepts cleared, basically. I want you to understand what IFML is. And as you know that uh, uh, Professor Marco told us, it, it's basically a uh, symbolic uh, uh, language. You know, it, it's a modeling language. So we have a view container, we have these view components, and uh, we have the class models, and we basically just draw the navigation flows from one place to another and keep moving. So we keep here, and I want to take from this to the details, and uh, these are our travel details. And so I expect basically to get from the expense screen to the details screens, and again, I don't want to forget that uh, I need to, first of all, bind it to my class, and more importantly, uh, not forget the display attributes. If you don't display anything, you are not going to see anything, right? So we want to display everything, uh, or at least the things that you are interested in seeing. And I'm going to take the name, date of purchase, and yeah, this is all relevant data and location and all so on and so forth. So let us put all this stuff in. And um, I don't know if you want to do this, but uh, yeah, yeah, good. So. Let us uh, generate and see if we can see our uh, travel details. Generation done in one second, which is very nice. Come here, look at this. And I just want to show you that the event should have a detail now. If you noticed in the last couple of times I compiled, I came to the event list and there wasn't really nothing there. So all this is dummy data uh, created by WebRatio for us. You can uh, replace it with uh, relevant data to your app and uh, you know work on it. And then the travel side, this is coming uh, from our web service, from our backend database. And now I just added the detail and I hope that uh, I didn't mess up anything, which I think I did. So let me quickly go. I think I didn't uh, set the property. Uh, the condition OID. And uh, enable default binding we have here. So why our OID is not taking place? Details is under the list. Okay, let me uh, recompile it and see if I'm missing something. I would just like to show you that how simple this is. And I want uh, the details to show, maybe I didn't set some property here, but maybe it's just something that got lost in the process. But anyway, uh, here is our dashboard. And um, you always look at this time here, 9.38, 9.38, that shows me that you know I'm using the most recent version. And here, for some reason, oh, I'm so sorry. It came down. Oh, I know what I did wrong. You know what happened? I am still in the same view, and it's good that this is happening so that you understand. Here is the expense. Just like here we had the welcome screen and the events underneath it, I took the expense and the details I put right underneath it. That's not the way you really want to look at it, right? You want this to be in another screen, and so let's delete this from here. Get rid of this. This is so wrong. Uh, our uh, navigation flow is a mess. We want actually to move to a second screen and then call it details and then create a, a detailed view inside of here and then 
you probably want to redo the binding to your travel class and I'm glad that this is happening so you will also not be very surprised if it happens to you and uh, we just uh, are all learning so yeah these are the items that we want I don't think I need this this is useless yeah so I got this stuff here we create the flow I like to do it this way with a right click but as I said you know you can also uh, go to the toolbar and do the navigation flow from here if you want to you know this is your navigation flow here. but I just do it right away and as you will uh, want to do it I think this is fine so let's uh, compile it again and see if this time we actually go to another screen rather than just seeing the stuff hidden here underneath this is not good this is horrible I mean the view is horrible <laughs> so we don't want to have a view which we have to click here and go down we want to go to a next screen and as you can see here now we have a next screen uh, also since we have a couple of minutes more uh, I would want to show you how the utility uh, functions are provided here so let me make some room for us and uh, if you can uh, just bear with me here uh, I want to since we have some time I didn't know if you would cover a lot but I'm just going to show you the utility menu here you have in the toolbar you can have a calendar you can have a QR code reader you can have but I'm just going to take a maps because I have a let's say for example map location whatever you call it and from this uh, or maybe not here yeah here and uh, we want to configure our map provider before we can really do anything and I'll just go here and create a new map provider and uh, what uh, we'll give it a name say Google Maps and uh, platform obviously I'm working on Android to just avoid the time and you need an API key now this is a whole process which you will have to follow I'm sure uh, you have done this before uh, you need to go to the Google developer console you have to register yourself and take your uh, you know and give your credentials and it, it there's a whole process how you create an API key but I already have one here so I'm just going to cut and paste it from this and uh, this is something which you will have to do uh, for your own in your own name right so I created this stuff so now I have my app view is fine and uh, I want to also provide the input to that map right it can't uh, do anything much unless I uh, so I'll take a data flow this time from this to the map and uh, this data flow I probably uh, want to configure as to what are the inputs required by Google so Google at least needs some form of address to go there you know so I have put some address in my end location field so I'm just going to use that and uh, I might just use the name for the title but it's not necessary what Google needs to draw a map is some address and currently uh, I have put it in this property so that's why I'm going to map the two if you had for example latitudes longitudes you could have done that but I don't have any of those properties right now and so I'm hoping now that I've connected this correctly and uh, let us uh, quickly uh, compile this uh, generate the source code and see if this works if this works this will be really really something and uh, okay I come here and uh, is a good call back that's fine uh, maybe I just uh, need to get out of this thing you know, and regenerate the whole thing the fresh uh, come back here okay so you come back now you come here okay go to travels select the second one into details. Hey, there you go. 4230 West McDowell, Phoenix. That's that. Now, is this cool or what? In 43 minutes, 44 minutes, we started at 9 sharp. This is 944. We created the entire thing. What I did not create for you, though, and which I really wanted to but uh, did not, uh, was the data service project itself. And it's not really very uh, complicated just like uh, you went and created uh, uh, I, let me close all this 
parts. So you see this. I, I have a mobile project in this. I have my data service project in this. To create a mobile project, I came here and I said, uh, file new mobile project. Same way I'm going to say file new data service project. And that's how I got this project here. And the moment I got the project, I opened it and I came to my, uh, this is my project. And uh, when I came here, I just set the uh, properties. I said, first I set the SQL database. In the SQL database, you give it a name. You can select any database. They provide you with a whole range of options here, as you can see, Postgres and MySQL and SQL Server, Apache, whatever. I selected MySQL because I have it running, right? And then I just gave this. They give a sample URL. You can cut paste this and just fill in the values. Currently, I'm running on localhost 3306. And this is my, the name of the schema that I've sent as default uh, right here. And so. This is my default schema, which I'm currently using. I gave those properties and that's it, you know, that's all there is. And I came to the data service and configured my services, which I already showed you. That's it. And then uh, we go ahead and go, go create uh, the source code. That's all there was, I did in your uh, absence was to create that stuff. But creating of source code, you already saw, it's generating the source code. And the user service I created in front of you, the register and login was created by default by web ratio. So that's all the data services. And then uh, we have these two projects. Here. One is your mobile, where you have your IFML uh, models uh, defined here. And you have your UML for the client side defined here. And in the data service project, you have a domain model, which is mapped to your backend database. That's as simple as that. I, I see it so simple and so elegant that uh, there's really no way you could miss this. And of course, I uh, was just reminded uh, to show you the build. I don't want to forget the build. Uh, how do you create a build? And uh, so this is my project. Uh, I want to say, well, let us do this. And here is an option to see the build configurations. Uh, so you might say, hey, I, I, I understand that you showed me everything to run, but how do we really create a build? You know, I want to create a new uh, APK file. And uh, by default, it populates here. And it also creates a default, uh, you know, uh, key store uh, for you uh, so that you don't have to spend time doing it. But ideally, when you go into production and do your own stuff, you might want to carefully give your own key store file and all the stuff and then go to the model. Currently, our base URL is localhost, but obviously later on, you will have somewhere in the cloud or in your uh, backend uh, servers. Give that, you give the API key, which I've already provided, and just create the build. Now, here I want you to understand that Web ratio assumes that you do not have your Android SDK installed on your machine. So what it does is it actually takes your visual model, excuse me, it takes your visual model and goes uh, on the cloud where it has all the latest SDKs installed for Android. And it will create a build on the cloud for you. So you don't have to really, you can see here, you know, your mobile application is now ready to be installed. The build is in progress. So it is building the application in the cloud. So you don't have to worry about whether I have my SDKs installed in the right folder. What is the Android home? What is this? What is that? Nothing you have to worry about. You just go and tell WebRatio, I'm ready. Here are my settings. Go create a build for me. It is going to create the build, and it is going to tell you when the build is ready, just click here, download your APK file. Take that APK file, drag and drop into your simulator or on your mobile device, and you have a ready-made app. It's, it's that plain and that simple. It's extremely powerful. Uh, what I really uh, want to highlight here is think of the amount of work that we did together this morning. We started at 9 o'clock. It is 9.48 at this moment. How many platforms out there uh, can you create a hybrid mobile app? This uses PhoneGap, this uses AngularJS, this uses Angu Ionic Framework uh, that you could have spent in such a short time in building a complete APK file with full-fledged, thread-safe, REST-based, enterprise-grade, production-ready web services running on the back end. How many platforms will you think come to your mind? 
to build this much, you will have one team working on back end, one team working on front end, and just cracking code for the next three weeks, uh, two weeks, uh, I don't know, depending on the size of your team and the expertise of the people working on it. But at least you would say that it will take a couple of days, if not weeks, to create this entire uh, infrastructure that has gone into this app. Here it says to me the build is complete. And uh, just think of this, man. And you just download the app package. There you go. It's downloading right now. Tell me if you're not impressed with this, you know, and tell me if I'm crazy or what. <laughs> I, I am very fascinated uh, with this uh, platform, and uh, I, I, I'm not sure of anyone who won't be fascinated. This is your APK file right here. And, uh, you know, I can email it to you if you want. You can run it, but you won't have the web services. But uh, think of it, you know. Uh, the, the power of this platform. I don't want to belabor the point. I think uh, uh, I have already uh, written two blogs on this and I want to write one more. Uh, there is an IFML a group that I opened on LinkedIn. You might want to join that uh, because Marco, uh, Professor Marco, the inventor of IFML, and then the entire web ratio team, uh, the founders and the CEO, they are all part of this group. And if you have any questions or you want to know more about Web Ratio platform or know more about IFML, and more than that, what cutting edge stuff is happening on a daily basis on this platform, you will be able to see there. So the group is called IFML on LinkedIn or just follow me, Daniel Parde, and you will see my blogs. I will be continuously upgrading this stuff. But any information that you need, you can go to webratio.com or email me at cognizant, daniel.parde at cognizant.com, and I will be more than happy to explain to you how this uh, whole thing can be beneficial for you and your organization and why. If you are just a developer, I, I think you must uh, pay attention to this technology because this is a very revolutionary disruptive technology, and this will change the way we currently do development today and especially with the new trends of microservices uh, art based architecture I think this will take foothold very rapidly in, in, in most of the uh, leading innovative uh, organizations. So where innovation is, is prioritized, I think uh, this is going to, you'll see a lot of this. In fact, uh, in a couple of years from now, you'll look back and say, did we actually write this with hand? Why did we ever do the visual modeling? Because this visual modeling code, what you see here, friends, is, is all there is. And this is a, a OMG approved specification. It's not something proprietary. Any uh, vendor can tomorrow build an engine to read this diagram, what you see here, and create a C-sharp code or Objective-C code or any code. And so this is future-proof code right here. And uh, this is just uh, enormous, and I think uh, I, I've said a lot. Uh, I, I hope you guys are impressed with this uh, entire end-to-end -end development on this comprehensive platform uh, called WebRatio. And uh, uh, going forward, uh, I hope to have a couple of more webinars where we can go into more in-depth. Uh, they have done some new stuff on the mobile payments, uh, on iBeacons, and then the uh, Internet of Things. Uh, we will bring more information to you about this as time goes by. Also watch out on the IFML page. Uh, if I, I hope to post some uh, videos on this uh, similar project with a little more slow-paced narration so you understand. I know I went very fast today because we were time bound and we are already at 9.53. So I would like to take a break and close here and allow uh, you guys to have any questions. So I leave it to Michaela for any QA session and uh, I think uh, I'm done here. So thank you Daniel for this uh, live demo, interesting live demo. Uh, we have received a number of questions and now I would like to Michaela to answer some of them. Uh, just a quick note, even if we run out of time, Michela will answer all the remaining questions in the follow-up follow -up email we are going to send to all participants. So, Michela, the question is, can web ratio be modified to generate code for different languages or platforms? If so, how easily? Hi, everybody. Thanks, Paolo, and thanks, Daniel, for the great presentation we just saw. Uh, about the question, well, right now, WebRatio is not extensible uh, in this uh, way, 
uh, but of course uh, it's something that uh, it could it could be done um, right now uh, we uh, as web ratio company uh, do this work for you so basically if you are intending to add a new uh, platform uh, for example uh, uh, Windows Phone uh, we are taking care uh, of this uh, and so uh, it's not possible right now for you as a customer to do this, but what you can do uh, is to extend the platform with uh, new capabilities for your mobile uh, and backend applications. Uh, what I mean is that uh, Daniel shows you that uh, the toolbar of the tool uh, allows you to add different components inside screens uh, and uh, you can also create your own components extending the IFML language uh, with a component that does uh, what you need uh, and you can reuse this component in your project. So the web ratio platform it can be extended in such way. And this is very powerful. Uh, think about a backend application uh, and you need to integrate your backend application with some legacy systems and of course each legacy systems have uh, a specific way uh, to communicate with other softwares like uh, uh, REST APIs or uh, Java framework and what you can do is to build a set of components that uh, basically uh, let your backend application communicate with these legacy systems and you can create these components like uh, some something like a library and that you can reuse them in whatever project you need. So this is how you can extend the tool uh, to meet the requirements that you have. And uh, I think that, that that's it. I mean, okay. Um, Okay, thank you, Michela, for this answer, this interesting answer. We have a second question, and it is, uh, it is possible to create a layout more sophisticated with web ratio? Yeah, as Daniel shows, uh, showed you before, um, the approach to the, the development is divided uh, according to uh, the specific goal the user has on the platform in a, a dedicated moment. So uh, what we did today, what Daniel did today was to concentrate on the features of the mobile application itself. But uh, in the layout view, uh, you can organize things as you like uh, in order to organize the item shown on the screen. And each item has a set of properties uh, related to the layout, uh, which allows you to configure the layout, but also you can create a dedicated project, which is a mobile style project, where you can collect all the templates you want, uh, and those templates uh, will give to the mobile application the visual identity you desire. So yes, sure, you can create sophisticated layout and not also, these layouts are reusable. So once you create them, you can apply them to different projects. So you are not creating templates for a single mobile application, but you are creating templates for a project, for a model, for a visual model. And this allows you to reuse them. So you can create a style uh, uh, that um, contains the templates for your uh, company corporate visual identity and you can apply them to all the projects that you desire. So this is very powerful. Okay, thank you again, Michaela. And uh, the last question, because we are uh, running out of time. So which are the technologies used, to, uh, used by the generated mobile application? Yes, um, the mobile application you get uh, is uh, written in HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. And uh, this, this, um, this, uh, this, this languages uh, are used basically because we are using the PhoneGap uh, and Apache Cordova technology, uh, which allows us to create and generate code that can be uh, used both for Android and iOS platform. So basically, um, HTML5, CSS, CSS3, and JavaScript, uh, then we use the Angular framework uh, for the client runtime of the mobile application, and the PhoneGap uh, framework handles the communication with the device. Uh, 
uh, and also uh, since as you as you saw in the demo uh, Webratio comes with a default uh, layout that can be applied to the applications and this uh, layout was built using the Ionic framework um, so these basically are the main technologies we uh, decided to use for the mobile application. Uh, of course, the backend application uh, is a, a web application, so it uses different technologies. It uses the Hibernate framework for connecting with the database, and uh, it's a J2E uh, web application, basically, so uh, you get uh, Java code for the backend uh, services. So, uh, thank you, Michela. Uh, now I invite, I invite you to contact us at uh, contact uh, at webratio.com if you want uh, a demo, a proof of concept, or info about training courses or certification. Also, uh, you can download and try Webratio mobile platform on our website, webratio.com. And now I want to thank you again to speakers and to all participants and wish you a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you, Paolo. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.